traditional ways of reading Dutch still life paintings. So in order to say something about what you think is going on in these paintings, it's important, I think, to know traditionally how they were looked at by art historians and art critics. So in order to do that, let's start with this 1668 Dutch painting by Maria van Osterwijk, where we see a rather standard symbol of vanitas, which is the first way that paintings were looked at historically. The skull represents sort of a moral lesson of life's briefness or the passing of everything that's material about this world and how sort of unimportant it is. In this particular painting, the skull is partially obscured by other items. And that's a bit unusual if you compare it with a lot of the other paintings. In the second Dutch painting by William Claus Hedda, we can see that the idea of vanitas is conveyed in a much more subtle way, such as, you see that peeled lemon? It could represent the quick unraveling of a short life. Or, you see that goblet that's overturned? That could signify that a person was just there in the painting, but is now absent which could be read as a type of dying. Now this Vanitas theme is closely linked with a second concept, and that is of other kinds of moral lessons, such as the sin of gluttony, found here in the gorged mincemeat pie. Or if we look at that goblet, that overturned goblet again, in the opulence and wealth, there might be a commentary on the sin of greed. So, there's one more, the third way that these paintings are talked about historically, and we see this in the 1658 painting by van der Spelt. And in this painting, the artist creates a rather dramatic, it's my favorite, dramatic sense of depth by including the blue silk curtain, which looks like it's ready to be pulled back. Now, of course, there is no depth. And that ability to sort of trick the eye into believing that there is, is called trick of the eye or trompe l'air. By the way, since we're looking at this painting, can you find an example of vanitas in this depiction? Did you notice there over on the left how Vanderspelt includes a wilted flower? I think this wilted flower is a sort of more subtle version of the human skull. Now you might be thinking that does this concept of vanitas, can it be read in so many different ways that it sort of becomes impossible to know what isn't vanitas? And you also may be wondering what the difference is between a symbol of gluttony and then the symbol of vanitas. Aren't they the same? Maybe you can't distinguish the two. But more importantly than those two things, what I really want you to think about or what are some other ways that we could read the symbols in these paintings, other than the passing of sort of a mislived life? We'll talk about those other ways in the second and third lecture. <laughs>